Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see you all here. We're going to start off with hymn number 434, Nearer My God to Thee. So please stand if you're able. Second song, Our God Reigns, if you're using the book, it's 534.
be seated. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to see everybody this morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, good morning to the live stream. We're glad that you're with us this morning, as long as the internet is working, which earlier it was not. So now it is. We'll take it for the few moments if it continues on. Uh, if not, and you're joining us later in the week, we're thankful for that as well. And of course, we post all of this stuff to uh, be on the internet um, later throughout the week, so you can find it there if uh, if the internet gets all squiggly. Uh, all right, I have, we do have a few announcements for this morning. I want to start first because several of you have already come up with great anticipation asking me about this. So Ruby, please come and share about the yard sale. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so we had our yard sale yesterday, and it ended up going really well. We had lots of stuff there. Uh, we ended up having like six or seven tables full of things to sell. Um, and so we made, for our mission trip, we made uh, $330 in total. So, yeah. Um, so we just want to say thank you to everyone who's been praying for it and also to everyone who donated their things. All right. Thank you, Ruby. Um, yeah, and I, I just want to echo that as well, uh, just a sense of gratitude for uh, just how you guys give so much constantly for all the different projects that we have going on and so forth. It's, uh, it's just really a, an encouraging, um, encouraging thing with that. Uh, we've been asking about the uh, Christmas child um, as well, and um, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what. I've been evicted from my seat. All right, that's okay. <laughs> and now I got to be on the front row. Um, oh, you don't want me to sing. Um, all right, so uh, Operation Christmas Child, we are good on sunglasses. Uh, so we have gotten all the sunglasses that we need. Thank you so much. And uh, last week we got a bunch of stuff that came in on that, so thank you. So right now we are um, we got different school supplies that we're asking for. There's uh, a board in the entryway that kind of gives some, some ideas for stuff, and it also shows the tally of how we're doing with the collecting as well, so check that out. Um, always on your way in, on your way out, check the entryway. There's going to be information. There'll, there'll be different stuff there, uh, different things for you to, to have or to take. Uh, so just always be kind of looking around because sometimes it won't change for weeks, and then sometimes it change, changes every week. So you just, you just never know. Um, but uh, the Christmas child box is, is an entryway there as well uh, for you to put your stuff in. Uh, of course, any questions, talk to Chrissy and, um, and get her ideas about different items and so forth. But right now is uh, a really good time to look for some sales and, and different stuff for the items. And, of course, there's a lot of school stuff out now. Um, so we do have, uh, we got some people traveling this weekend. We'll, we'll, these next few weeks are going to be kind of, kind of wild. Um, we have a some, some, uh, couple of ladies that they've decided they are going to go to college. Um, yeah, was praying against it, hoping they change their mind, but they're going to go. Uh, so I think your last Sunday, right? Um, Liana and Ruby, so uh, give them some hugs, uh, duct tape them, and keep them here, maybe. Uh, that's all a joke, folks. This is going on the internet. It's all a joke. We, we obey the law. Um, but uh, uh, we were so thankful for Ruby and Liana, and uh, we're going to miss them, but, but praying for them as well. Um, so it, we are going to have just some craziness that, that happens. I've, uh, I've been saying kind of off and on for a while now, like the music situation could get pretty wild uh, coming up here a little, in a little bit. Um, and uh, n I think next, is next Sunday the 20th? Yes. Um, that could be a very wild Sunday. So uh, you're going to want to be here for it because I have no idea yet what's going to happen, all right? Uh, but uh, whatever it is, be here and uh, enjoy it with us. And, uh, and we're just going to go with the flow, all right? Uh, I've learned a long time ago, we cannot control things. 
All right, so we just have to continually adapt. Uh, and with the music stuff, we're going to be adapting again here coming up. But we'll, we'll figure it out. God is faithful, right? And he, he continues to show himself uh, faithful. Um, all right, one last thing that I want to mention is uh, just kind of a little bit, a little bit out there, but oh, now I've made you nervous. Don't worry. Don't, everything, everything's fine. I just realized as I was saying that, that for me, when I say that, you're like, oh, no, what's coming? Um, in the entryway, there's going to be uh, these uh, sheets of paper about a young lady uh, who, who doesn't attend here. We don't know her, but um, she's a friend of someone who does attend here from time to time. Uh, but this is all down in, in Massachusetts. Uh, but this young lady, her name is Angelica, and she's going to be uh, going with YWAM um, for, uh, for a few months coming up here. So she's seeking to raise funds for that. Uh, so this is uh, just kind of the information about her introducing herself and so forth. Um, we don't do this a lot with people that we don't know. If it feels right, then I'll do it. This one felt right to do it. All right. I don't. I don't know the young lady, um, but it just it just felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, "Yeah, put it out there. See if anybody wants to be part of that with with helping her to do that." So um, there is a stack of these. Take it, look through it, read it, and just pray about it. And see if it would be something that you would be interested in. If you have uh, some questions about the connections or the different things about it, just let me know and I can, I can fill you in about more of that um, in, in conversation. But um, let me just share one sentence from, from, her, um, from her paper here about what it is that she'll be doing. So the first part will be training and so forth. But then she says uh, that there's different tracks that they can go in after the training. She says, I will be taking the life bearers track which focuses on maternal health care to help women find their identity in Jesus. Uh, so I think that's pretty awesome. Um, so if, uh, again, um, if you're interested, uh, just check this out and see, see how, the Holy, how the Holy Spirit leads. All right? Uh, okay, I think, that's, I think that's all for the announcements. Um, if I remember something else, I'll, I'll uh, let you know when... I get back up here. Uh, but in the meantime, let's pray, and then we'll get going with some more music. So join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, Father, oh, you are so good, and you are so gracious, and we're just thrilled to be in your presence as the gathered body. Um, so, Father, as we spend some time with you singing, um, worshiping in all the different ways that we do this morning. Um, speak to us, Father. Be present with us. Be here with us. Uh, encourage us. Help us. Uh, guide us. Direct us. And, and help us to follow faithfully after you. Uh, you. You are God. You are God alone. And we are here to be with you. Um, so, Father, may your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everyone, good morning. It's so good to see you all. It's so good to see you if you're joining us on the live stream. Um, but we're just so thankful to be here worshiping um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're going to go before the Lord in song again. If you're willing and able, please stand with us. If you don't, if you can't stand today, don't worry about it. Worship from your seat. Worship wherever you are.
pray before we go into our next song. Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning, I just want to thank you for the bodies that are here in this place. God, for the people, for the hearts that have gathered here in the name of Jesus. God, bless our people. God, bless our people in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your spirit is here. God, not only that we pray that your spirit is here, but God, we want you to know that you are welcome here, that we are not ashamed of your gospel. We are not ashamed of your truth. We are not ashamed of your presence, God. And with your presence comes strength. With your presence comes healing and life abundant. God, may we know you better. May we desire you stronger. God, may we shine brighter in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, we know that your spirit works miracles even today, even among us. God, that you heal the sick, that you open the eyes of the blind. God, that you are working in this place and that you are working in this town. God, shake the roads, shake the ground of Plymouth, New Hampshire and the greater area of Plymouth, New Hampshire. God, bring your spirit here and dwell here. Make your dwelling place with us. God, we love you. Friends, we're going to sing another song together. Um, and as we sing our God, friends, may we remember that God is living and active and strong. Amen? Amen.
ask you, what God, what other God could come and dwell with us and know us and save us and rescue us despite of our unholiness, despite our unrighteousness? Friends, let's sing one more song together before we hear our message from Dennis. for singing with us. You may be seated. All right. Um, it's great hearing all the voices of the children. Um, I want to start introducing uh, this in this way, um, every every week, um, I when it comes time, I, I'm writing the sermon and I finish the sermon. When I finally finish that last word, and I say, "Okay, it's done," uh, a, a groan goes out from me. <laughs> um, 
working on sermons is it's a it's a very it's a very difficult gut wrenching process. I've shared this before with some of you. Sometimes it it goes great, it's easy, and sometimes it's just an all out wrestling match. Um, ideas don't flow, it doesn't work, and so forth. And um, Amen. yeah. <laughs> So this is Rob Burns, and this is where I'm going. Um, it's hard enough to get up here and, and preach. Uh, it's even worse when better preachers are in the room. <laughs> and Rob is so humble, he's not going to agree with that. But it is true. Uh, some of you have, have heard uh, Rob preach, and, and you know it, it is a blessing to hear him preach. It's good to have the Burns uh, family uh, with us this morning. Um, and uh, some of you, uh, we have some new folks. There's a lot of lots of craziness with the with the church over the last few years. Um, if you uh, if you want to be blessed, uh, get to know Rob and Lisa Burns. They are um, they are um, dear dear friends, and the whole Burns family is as well. Uh, as you all are, I love 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 singing with you. Uh, I love being here with you on Sundays. It is, it is a real treasure. Um, I want to start with a poem. And it's about praying, but I think it goes beyond that. I think it, is, it can also apply in uh, the development of a sermon, in which I have to do as my role here. Uh, but then I think it also applies in the receiving of the sermon, which is on your end and quite honestly, my end as well, because this isn't me saying, here, have this. It is, hopefully, this is what the Holy Spirit is saying to all of us, right? Um, and, um, but this, the sermon this week was a wrestling match. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't flow as well as I would like it to and so forth. Um, but, but listen to this poem about praying, it's entitled. Praying. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. I think the gist of there is don't worry about making your prayer perfect, right? It doesn't have to be perfect and listen for the other voice, right? So this is what I'm trying to tell myself this morning as well when, um, with, with sermons. It's not about my voice. So if you get lost which we're prone to do. If you do, what is he, what is he going to listen, listen for a phrase, listen for a word, listen for a scripture reference, something. Maybe the Holy Spirit is saying, this is for you this morning. Take it, investigate it further. Talk with me about this. Listen to what I have to share with you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday about this. Let's listen for the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit, to speak to us this morning, right? So, we won't elaborate. We'll put it out there, what's here, and let God do the rest, all right? Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And they were going along the road sometime later. And someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Matthew 5, Luke 9. The the first reading was Matthew 5, the Beatitudes and the salt and the light. And the second reading is what we looked at last week from Luke 9. And this is where... Uh, letting, letting God elaborate, as I was working through this one last time this morning and read that, that with the second individual, and Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. A, a thought hit me that here this man was talking about, let me go and deal with death, and Jesus is saying, I am life. Go and proclaim life. Let's not deal with the dead. People are dying all over the place. Let's give a message of hope of life. A few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, when we were in West Virginia, uh, the family and I visiting our family, uh, I was able to go and have breakfast with uh, one of my good friends that uh, we grew up together. And... uh, we were, we were closest of friends. We looked alike growing up. Our, our, uh, his grandmother confused me for him once. My dad confused he and I once. Uh, you know, that's how close we were. Um, and we were able to get away and have, have breakfast. So we went to uh, Cracker Barrel, uh, right, the restaurant Cracker Barrel. I have not been to Cracker Barrel for breakfast quite possibly for 20 years. Right? It's been a long time since I had been. Uh, to a Cracker Barrel. So let's just say that I have no memory of the last time that I had been at a Cracker Barrel, right? Walk into the Cracker Barrel that that was there when I was a kid in my hometown, and it's the same. (laughs) Wow. You know, it was amazing. And, uh, but I do have this one distinct memory, a food memory, uh, from Cracker Barrel from, from growing up, all right? The hash brown casserole. I loved that when I was a kid. Right? And so I'm looking on the menu, and they got it as like a whole breakfast thing now. I was like, wow. That's it. I'm done. (laughs) Right? I know what I want. Right? So I ordered that for my breakfast. And this little thought, you know, it's like, is it going to be the same? Have you ever had that? Right? You go back to something like, "Is, is this memory going to be... Similar, the same, is it going to be totally different or or what? You know, I was just kind of anticipating that. And food comes and I take that first bite and just this flood of emotions goes over me. (laughs) Right? It was exactly the same. 
It was delicious. I was like, wow, this is amazing, right? It was like I was in middle school again. I mean, it was just, it was fantastic, right? And uh, we just had, we just had a great breakfast, my friend and I. It was, it was familiar, and it was nice. The conversation was good. My friend is an amazing man. It was just great. But familiar can be dangerous, right? Especially nice familiar, right? It's so familiar that we begin to miss things, or it's so familiar that it can set certain expectations that we're not ready for. Familiar can dull us to a difficult reality in the world. We finished our breakfast. We go to pay. My friend, my friend bought me breakfast, so it was even better. Right? It tasted even better at that point. Right? <laughs> now, believe it or not, my friend in southern West Virginia is a Patriots fan. Yeah. He's a good guy. I told you. <laughs> and he was wearing a Patriots hoodie. Right? Uh, I had my uh, Rhino bike shop shirt on <laughs> from just down there, right? But, but he's in his, his Patriots hoodie, all right? He goes up to the cashier to pay, and it was this, uh, this older lady, and she sees his Patriots hoodie. And she begins to insult the Patriots, all right? Now, I'm a few feet back, and I'm just kind of watching this, and, and I'd been dealing with this for the whole time of New England being insulted and so forth, and I was just like, do I, do I enter into this? Like, no, because I'm going to get myself in trouble. So I'm just, and, and my friend was able to handle it. He was just like, yeah, right? And we never told the lady, like, hey, I live in New Hampshire. You know? <laughs> like, but she just went on about her hatred for the Patriots. And one certain quarterback, he's no longer with the, with the team. <laughs> She said it with a smile, but the hatred was real. Right? Reality smacks hardest after a good breakfast. I've had a great breakfast. To be, it wasn't nasty, but it was just like, here's reality. Insults, jest, back and forth. Right? What am I getting at? The Beatitudes and the cost of following Jesus can become so familiar that maybe we miss how much of a gut check they are, right? And we could be quite surprised when we see someone struggling with them. They're reading, they're, they're trying to live me out, this is, this is hard, I don't know about this, I don't even know if I like this, Right? Or maybe it lands heavy in a moment that we weren't ready for. The Beatitudes, the cost of following Jesus. Jesus says, here's what it means to follow me. And, and in theory before, it was like, this is going to be awesome. But in reality, it's like, ooh, that lands heavy in this moment. Right? We're not ready for it. Maybe in that moment when it lands heavy, maybe we say, wait a minute. Is that even right? Is what I'm reading here, is that true? Is that right? Did, did Jesus really have that expectation? Did Jesus really think this way? Because maybe this is harder for me to, to get than I first thought. Right? Maybe when we get handed, the Jesus way is to die to self. Pick up our cross and follow. Maybe that's too heavy for us at a moment. Right? When we really get a grasp of what that will mean. Right? Maybe we begin to think and say, the Jesus way seems impossible. The Jesus way seems painful. The Jesus way seems too difficult. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I got I to gotta think about this a little bit more. Or maybe we have a lot of knowledge about the Jesus way, but when it comes to putting that knowledge into practice, it's another issue. I recently heard somebody that said, too many Christians are content to be listeners who gain a lot of knowledge, but have never put that knowledge into practice. Right? Now that's a gut check to me. We have knowledge. What are we doing with the knowledge? 
And I think we see that a lot in the New Testament Gospels. Individuals walk up to Jesus, or he walks up to them, and he invites them to go beyond the knowledge. And what do we know? Not everyone would. Some of the ones who it made the most sense that they would, they said, no, it's too much. The cost is too much. It's too hard. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to follow. And it just stays as knowledge. There's an Old Testament individual, I think, that moves beyond knowledge. It wasn't a plan. It wasn't anything. There was a lot of craziness that erupted in his life. His name is Job. Job, it said, was a righteous man whose life completely fell apart. Everything. Health, wealth, and family exploded. Ravaged so horribly that he is in deep despair. Friends arrive. Oh, good. My friends are here. Not so for Job. Right? The friends arrive and they sit with him for a while and then they speak. And if you could just kind of picture it in a sense, not only do they extend one arm in blame, they point both. Blaming him so much. I can't even do it with one finger, with one hand, with one arm. I'm going to point both at you. There's a a painting by William Blake, and that's how he paints it. Uh, The friends lined up with both, both arms extending at Job. You are at fault. You have sinned. Confess it. Tell us what it what's going on. And Job is just there in horrible despair. What does Job do? He looks to God and he questions him. Right? And he questions him quite severely. Someone has said, Job rails against God, reeling off a list of quite reasonable questions, and he demands God answer. In chapters 38 and 39 of the book of Job in the Old Testament, God begins to respond. But God's response is not what we're anticipating. There isn't a big reveal that explains why things have turned out so badly for Job. Instead, God unfurls an overwhelming list of his own questions. And at the end of God's questions, the author continues, Job finds himself no longer furious, but awestruck, humbled by his tiny place in a colossal universe of immense complexity and deft design. Meanwhile, his situation is transformed from a problem into a mystery. A problem is a straightforward deficit, like a breakage or a malfunction that you can simply fix and return to how it should be. A mystery is something unique and wondrous, which absorbs the whole of your intellect, emotion, aptitude and experience you can only enter after which your heart and soul will never be the same again before god's speech in chapters 38 and 39 job is saying why won't you fix this problem afterward job is saying take me with you into the mystery Take me with you into the mystery. I love that. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful prayer. To move from fix this to I just want to be with you in this amazing mystery. Right? Still, there will be those who struggle. There will be those who will be skeptical. It can seem impossible. How could this actually all work out? And a challenge with the impossible is that our imaginations can't fathom it. We dismiss it because it isn't easily there tangible. Right? Having this changes everything. Imagine if we didn't have this to to grab hold of, to read through. But because we have this, it's more tangible. We can 
We can grab it. We can hold it. We can smell it. We can, as the psalmist says, we can taste it. Right? It's more real because we have it right here. But with the impossible, we don't have that. It's just ethereal. It's just out there. We can't really grab it. Our imaginations can't think of the solution. We can't see the pathway. We can't see the way. Another thought that I appreciated this week that I came across was, before we ask God to do the impossible, let's start with the possible and give him what we have. Before we ask God to do the impossible, let's start with the possible and give him what we have. I I wish I had come up with that. That's how much I like that, right? But it got me thinking, well, what do I have? What do I have that I can give to help with the impossible? And this isn't an exhaustive list, but a few things that came to mind immediately were attention. Give my attention to God. Give my curiosity to God. Give time to God and a willingness to be made new. Attention, curiosity, time, and a willingness to be made new. That statement is huge. The naturalist's term is metamorphosis. The spiritual term is sanctification. Right? Now, right now, we're in a special moment where the monarch caterpillars are out and they're hungry. Right? We got like six or seven in the house, right? Um, waiting, we're, we're feeding them and just, just waiting for them to enter into that metamorphosis stage, right? It is magical. If you want to see magic and miracle and beauty, uh, go find a monarch caterpillar put it in an old aquarium and watch it become a butterfly. You will be awestruck. It is, it is an astounding thing to watch, right? Imagine with me how crazy the first conversation about a caterpillar becoming a butterfly must have been. Can you imagine, right? The person that hadn't seen it be like, what? That thing used to be what? Oh, come on. You're lying to me, right? Like, it must have been absolutely, like, how do you describe it? You can't really, like, you've like, you got to see it for yourself, right? You've got to experience this for yourself, right? It's a mystery. It's a fabulous mystery to watch a caterpillar become a butterfly. Now, I personally get lost in the magic of it, right? But there are others who begin to think of questions. And there's this guy that had a question about this process. And the question that he had was, how is the brain of a hungry caterpillar also the brain of a, hung, of a, a flying butterfly? Right? How is the brain of a hungry caterpillar also the brain of a flying butterfly? Because you think, those are two very different things. <laughs> right? Okay. Well, he didn't leave it at that. He began to research, and they uh, just uh, a paper has just been released about this. Uh, fascinating, uh, I read a fascinating article about the paper this this week. I didn't try to read the paper because I probably wouldn't have understood it, right? So I read an article. I still didn't understand it, but kinda kinda got it. Listen, listen to this. Um, they're wondering, can is it the same brain? Right, and and if it is, like, how, how how does it go through this process to live so differently and so forth? Right. So basically, what they have discovered, uh, they they did this with uh, fruit flies. All right. The larva brain dissolves, and this new brain is rewired remolded made new so that the memories of the larva don't carry over to the adult catch that 
It's new. It's different from what it was. That, in that dissolving metamorphosis process, this new brain develops. Right? Now, for us as humans, it's a slower process, but as far as I can tell, that's what's going on with us as we go into the deep mystery with Jesus. Or it is what should happen, what is needed to go into the deep mystery. Right? There's a familiar phrase in American Christianity. Come to Jesus as you are. Come to Jesus as you are. Nothing wrong with it. That is true and beautiful. But there's a second part that gets left out. Come to Jesus as you are and be made new. We can't leave out that second part. Come to Jesus as you are and be made new. Be sanctified. Metamorphized into this new thing. Right? And it will only be as this new creation in Christ that we will have any hope to grasp, even a little bit, pick up your cross and follow me. We won't be comfortable. We won't fit in with everyone. We will have friends and family that turn on us. But Jesus says, follow me and be made new. If you have a Bible and you want to follow along, um, quickly, let's hear Colossians chapter 3. Uh, part of chapter 3. Colossians is in the New Testament. It's uh, in the letters, um, partway through the New Testament. And I want us to just hear this. There's, there's another reference that you could look at, 2 Corinthians 5 as well. Uh, we won't read that today. But I want us to hear this language in Colossians 3. And I'm going to go... go I'm going to go ahead and start reading it for us. If you have a different translation, it's fine. Words might be a little bit different, but just follow along. Chapter 3, verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen, chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Holy Spirit, elaborate on that for us. There's a lot there, but that, this is serious. This is not like, ah, if you kind of feel like it. Put it on. Right? Let God clothe us to be made new. And there's a chance. The odds are high. You could be extremely confused with my 
mess of words. And I understand, right? I want to close with a picture to hopefully try to get out what I'm saying, a significant part of what I'm trying to say today, all right? Um, So if you're hearing this stuff about being made new, a new creation, alive in Christ, dead to self, following Jesus, not yourself, those are, those are no small things, right? And so if, if your response in hearing that is one of defeat and saying, I can't do this. This is impossible. There is no way that I can do that. I'm barely getting out of bed in the morning. What I want to say is, that's exactly where you're supposed to be. That's the thought that we should have. We can't do this. It is not within our power or our ability to be made new. Right? So it's exactly the right place to be. It's the best place to be for us to say, I can't do this. Does that sound strange? Right? Here's the picture. Look to the birds on the water. Specifically the common loon. Right? A loon chick hatches from its egg, and for weeks they are not very capable. They can swim and they can climb up on the, on the parent's back, but they, at early on they can't dive, they, they can't fly, uh, they can't hunt for themselves. There is very little that they are actually able to do for themselves. The safest place for them to be is they just swim right with mom and dad, right? And then they crawl up under the wing, right? And it's an amazing thing to watch. It's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And I was, uh, I was with them the other day, and I was watching as the parents were fishing constantly to feed their two chicks, right? And... And the, the chicks, uh, they, they didn't order off a menu, right? They're just there on top of the water. And whatever mom and dad come up with, that's the offering, right? And again and again and again, the adults would come up, the parents would come up out of the water, and they would have these tiny little minnows less than an inch big, right? If you try to fillet that thing, you're getting nothing, all right? They are tiny. There's, there's hardly anything to them. But the parents would come up, and they'd have it in their beak, and they would just swim right up, and the chick would swim right up, and they would just take it real quick and down the hatch. Right? Again and again and again and again. Just the tiniest little minnows. I'm sitting there in the kayak, and I look over, and the adult loon pops up out of the water with this massive trout in its beak. And I literally laughed out loud. <laughs> it's like, there is no way that chick is eating that trout. Right? And so I'm just watching this. I'm watching this play out. What's, what's going to happen? You know, how's this, how's this going to work out and so forth? And the, the loons just jump on the way. They're softening up, doing something to the, to the fish and the, the, the adult and the chick come together, and I'm just waiting. And it happened. That little chick grabbed that trout, which is the, was the same length as it was, and whoop, right on down. Right? And then a little bit later, the next thing, just a little minnow again. And again and again, just little minnows. Right? And I was thinking about this. And a prayer emerged for me from watching this interaction with these birds. The prayer goes like this. Father, I am not able, but you always provide. I eat and rejoice in your presence. Whatever it is, If it's a minnow, if it's a massive trout, 
whatever it is, I cannot catch it on my own. Father, you feed me. You provide for me. I can't. Thank you. I'm filled with gratitude. Because if it was up to me, I'd go hungry. Right? Uh, Now, Dean and I went out on Thursday morning and had a fantastic time with the Loon family, right? And they put on a show. We were out kayaking, and a third adult Loon showed up, right? And we're, uh, we're, we're paddling along, and this intruder loon shows up. Now, this is a danger. That intruder loon is trying to take the territory and could possibly kill the chicks, right? So we're going along, and what do we see? We see the parents escorting this loon, this intruding loon, away from the chicks, And they take that other loon all the way to the other side of the pond, right? The two chicks are hiding in some rocks, trying to stay safe while the parents go and deal with this intruder, right? And we sat back and watched the battle. (laughs) And it started. They're swimming, they're diving, they're going after each other, they're doing the penguin dance, they're hollering at each other, all this kind of stuff. And then the feats of strength show up. I don't know if you know about this, but this is what they'll do. They'll they'll try to show how strong they are. And the father loon was just showing his strength, doing this specific swimming pattern and so forth. And eventually, finally, that intruder loon took off and starts flying away. Now, it takes them a while, so they got to circle around, circle around. So we're watching this other loon circle around, and he's hollering and so forth. And then all of a sudden, that father loon takes off as well. Right? The battle on the water continues in the sky. And that dad loon, he's, he's up in the sky now, and he's chasing after that other loon. And they're hollering at each other, and they're just flying after one another and so forth. And they're going around in circles, and all of a sudden, they disappear behind the trees. I'm like, okay, well, it's over. It wasn't. Because we could hear them. They landed on another body of water somewhere that we couldn't see, and we could hear them hollering at each other again, right? And that, that father loon eventually came back victorious. The victory had been secured, right? The battle was over. The battle was won. The territory was secured. But for the father loon, he wasn't even just going to say, okay, yeah, this is my territory. He said, I'm going to go to your territory and let you know. <laughs> right? He lands back on the water. What does he do? He immediately starts fishing again for the chicks. <laughs> right? Fellow chick. We are not able. And that is the best place to be. Because we have another. And he provides and he protects. You don't have to go alone. You don't have to fight the battles alone. Because we are alive in Christ. We are a new creation. The old has dissolved away. And with rewired, renewed brain and being. Let's follow Jesus. Deep into the mystery. Let's pray. Father, thank you for my friends. Bless them, help them, encourage them. Uh, Father, we have things going on in our life. You know about them. You know about the hardships. You know about the difficulties. You know about the, uh, the successes that tempt us to think that we have done something. But in truth, without you, we are hopeless. Give us clarity of that. Help us to see that, that 
that this is this is a beautiful thing to that we we can come to you as we are and we will be made new something that we can't imagine something that we can't fathom something that we couldn't do ourselves you can and you are because you love us you care for us and indeed you are a good good father and I thank you for the picture that I can witness in person and try to expound with words of the loons. Give us imaginations, Father, as we look at your creation, as we go through our lives to, to see lessons, to, to see parables that you can teach us with flowers, grass, bees, birds, water, food the patriots <laughs> whatever it is father we know that you can use it for your good and for your purposes but give us an imagination give us clarity to see it give us a willingness a desire to taste and to see that you are good and then father as the psalmist has said help us to tell of your wondrous works so that others may know, may hear, may live. We worship you, Father. We praise you, Father. Thank you for loving us, blessing us, being with us here. Bless my brothers and sisters and help them in this coming week with whatever it is that you have and the way that you lead them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Dennis. Friends, we're going to close our time together with one more song. Would you stand with us if you're able? Hmm. We know from feasting on his goodness that there is nothing better than being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. There's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. It's true. And then you came along and put me back together. Now every desire is now.
Amen. Thank you for singing with us. The simplest truths can be the most profound truths when we're in this world, when we're in this walk and the rest of our week. May we remember that there's nothing that we can do, nothing that we can be a part of that is greater than the presence of the Lord. Our uh, parting scripture comes from First John, uh, sorry, First Peter, uh, chapter one, verses three through five, in which says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance." incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time thank you for being here with us go in peace